High-end results, zero filler. Welcome back to the 3-Minute Node. Today, we're stepping into the Cutting Edge series to look at Seed VR2, a workflow that is currently redefining what is possible with open-source upscaling, pushing images all the way to native 4K. Most of you know the drill, we start with a high-quality base. I'm using Z Image Turbo to generate our starting point. The prompt is complex. Silk, gold, floating lanterns, and wind-blown fabric. It's the perfect test for an upscaler because of the intricate textures. Z Image gives us a beautiful 1024 base, but to get this to a professional 4K print or display grade, a standard SDXL image to image refine or latent upscale just won't cut it. Seed VR2 is a game changer because it moves away from traditional image to image and focuses on pure, faithful structural upscaling. If you head into your comfy UI templates under the extensions area, you'll see the new section for Seed VR2 options. There's a simple image upscale, which is great for quick 1080p work using the 3B FP8 model, but for the real heavy lifting, we're going to use 4K image upscale template. First, we need to install the Seed VR2 video upscaler custom node. Before we wire this up, I wanna give a huge shout out to the developers over at the Seed VR2 GitHub and Hugging Face. They've provided a range of models from 3B to the massive 7B weights. For this 4K demo, we are using the Seed VR2 7B Sharp FP16 checkpoint, which is the largest file in size. Let's look at the node architecture in the JSON I've provided. We're using three core components, the Seed VR2 Load DIT model, the Load VAE model, and the primary upscaler V2.5.22. When you load these, check your default values against the official templates. There are two settings here that are absolute lifesavers for hardware management. First, blocks to swap is set to 36. This controls how many transformer blocks are moved between your GPU and system RAM. Second, the offload device is set to CPU. Seed VR2 is a RAM hungry beast, and by offloading the model weights to your system RAM when they aren't actively processing, it allows those of us without enterprise-grade A100s to actually hit 4K resolutions without a CUDA out of memory error. Now, let's set enable debug to true and run this workflow. Watch the command line. I have to pause here, this developer deserves a medal for these logs. The transparency is incredible. It tracks RAM peak usage at every single stage. In an ecosystem where error, out of memory is usually a cryptic mystery, Seed VR2 tells you exactly which step, DIT loading, VAE encoding, or sampling, hit the ceiling. It makes troubleshooting high res workflows a breeze. But let's talk about the results because this is where you need to manage your expectations. I did several runs, including some 512 by 512 images with blurred faces. Here's the reality check. Seed VR2 is a faithful upscaler, not a face detailing tool or a generative image to image tool. If the source face is a blurry mess, Seed VR2 will often struggle or even introduce artifacts because it's trying to reconstruct detail based on the existing structure rather than hallucinating a new face. It's a tool for enhancing quality, not fixing bad anatomy. If the base is already of high quality, Seed VR2 will produce a highly satisfying final output. Let's look at our first test case, where we go from 1024 to 4096. The original face is relatively small in the frame, but the base quality is decent. In the final 4K output, the garment and hands look fantastic, but if you look closely at the mouth, the teeth have become a little weird. It's sharp, but the reconstruction struggled with that specific structural detail. In the second test, we have another 1024 to 4K jump. This time, the original face is small and good looking, but blurry. Even though the clothes and hair come out great and the hands are much sharper, the face actually has worse artifacts than our first realistic image. This specific image has a Chinese brush painting style and the upscaler just couldn't find enough anchor points in the blur to make the face work. Moving to our third example, we're looking at another 1024 to 4K upscale in that same Chinese brush painting style. Again, the original face was small. While the final face here looks slightly better than the previous attempt, those artifacts are still present. It proves that style doesn't excuse a lack of base resolution. Now, look at what happens when we try to push a 512 by 512 image all the way to 4K. Because the starting resolution is so low, 
the original face is extremely blurry. The final result here is honestly just not good. It's weird and distorted because there simply wasn't enough data for the Dye T model to work with. Finally, let's look at a best case scenario. This is a 1024 portrait where the face is much larger than a medium shot and already in great shape. The final 4K image is objectively good. However, if we're nitpicking, you could argue it's almost too sharp. It can start to look a bit unnatural because the level of reconstructed detail is so high. The takeaway here is clear. Seed VR2 is a precision instrument. It won't save a bad generation, but it will take a great one and make it gallery ready. To give you some perspective, I've hooked up a traditional SDXL upscale workflow for comparison. I've synced both to Seed42 so we can see the pixel for pixel difference. SDXL, even with tiled via E, usually hits a wall well before 4K. It relies on a denoise value. If you set it high, you get creative new details but lose the likeness. Set it low and it stays blurry. Seed VR2, however, utilizes a diffusion transformer, DIT architecture. It is significantly more faithful to your original pixels, maintaining the exact soul of your generation while adding that high-frequency texture and sharpness required for 4K. To compare these methods fairly, I first pushed the SDXL tiled upscale all the way to 4K using the tiled VAE. Even with a conservative denoise of 0.3, the results weren't there. The mouth and eyes ended up looking quite weird. It becomes clear that SDXL struggles to maintain structural integrity at those extreme 4K scales. To get a side-by-side -side look, I copied the Seed VR2 nodes over to compile one massive workflow that runs both SDXL and Seed VR2 simultaneously. This time, I scaled back the ambition to a 2K comparison, moving from 1024 to 2048 for both workflows. Even at this lower resolution, SDXL still looks a little unnatural. Seed VR2, by comparison, is significantly better in terms of fidelity and structure. However, it is almost too successful. For my personal taste, the output is so sharp it can feel a bit unnatural. It's a trade-off between the creative, sometimes messy diffusion of SDXL and the hyper-precise, slightly clinical reconstruction of Seed VR2. If you want the ultimate fidelity, Seed VR2 is your new gold standard. It's technical, it's heavy, but for professional CGI results, it is unmatched. Grab the JSON in the Discord, check those debug logs and start pushing your renders to the limit. Stop watching, start creating. And that's the node, all open source, no filler. Thank you for watching. Grab the file, keep creating.